everybody. It's the off season. We are uh, we're no longer playing football. Um, the Detroit Lions are no longer playing football. Uh, we are right before the Senior Bowl. Um, Scott Bischoff here coming for uh, to, to coming at you for Detroit Lions podcast. Uh, we're, this is going to be our first in the off season uh, run of videos. I don't know what to call this thing. I don't think you guys should have any expectations from me to be creative or any of that that stuff uh, to figure out what this is going to be called. So we're not going to call it anything for now. We'll figure that all out. Um, but uh, coming to you for Detroit Lions podcast, uh, we're going to wrap up the season and we're going to uh, let you guys know what we have coming for you and uh, have a little conversation about where the Lions are now. So uh, stay tuned. We're coming uh, right after the break. We're coming at you with uh, with uh, everything I just said. I made a list so I didn't forget anything. Um, so just kind of an explanation of what we're going to do. This is going to be a draft-based uh, YouTube um, kind of thing. Um, I think it's going to be available in podcast form too, but um, it's not just going to be draft based. Um, even though I just <laughs> okay, we're going to try to make this fun for everybody, and so it's not so so crazy serious because it doesn't have to be. We're gonna, you know, I'm going to try to give you as much information as I can and opinions and all that stuff, but um, I hope to do it in a manner that's not like overbearing and I don't know everything. You know, so um, you probably already know that. So so just an expectation from me, um, I think I'm going to, it's going to be uh, several videos a week. Um, some will be, you know, specifically position based, like, hey, let's talk about guards kind of thing. And, and we'll, we'll talk about some guards in the draft. Uh, sometimes it'll be a... Uh, you know, like a reaction to maybe a mock, not even a reaction, but just like this is the mock draft trends that are happening and maybe agreeing or disagreeing or whatever. We'll just, t we'll just talk about it. Um, and sometimes it'll be a reaction to some things like they'll be, you know, in the free agency process, we'll, re we'll, we'll talk about what they're doing and some moves that they've made and that, that kind of stuff. People, you know, teams, players that they're meeting with and all, you know, all these things. So we're going to try to cover all that stuff. So the expectation is to have, um, Multiple videos every week for, for Chris at Detroit Lions Podcast and for uh, Chris and Jeff Risden and I to just kind of um, give you as much information from a draft standpoint as we can. Uh, Senior Bowl starts next week, so it, the draft season officially here. Uh, I am not going to be at the Senior Bowl. Uh, life gets in the way. Uh, I think Chris and Jeff are going. I will be at the Senior Bowl. So my hope and expectation is – to have access to the practice video and to watch the practice videos and then have a, a video come out, you know, in the evening, a quick hitting video come out in the evening about the things that I've seen during the day. Chris and Jeff will be on site, so they'll be able to to get you much more access to, uh, you know, the instant stuff. But that's kind of what, what the expectations are, are for me um, from this point until you know the draft comes so um if we just look at the Lions season as a whole uh they obviously started one and six and finished uh eight and two which is it was just it, they went on an incredible run um they played great football for the last 10 weeks of the season in just about every way they had a couple you know there's a couple of games where you the Carolina game stands out as one that was a bit of a disappointing game, but the other loss was to Buffalo, and there, you know there's no there's no shame in losing that football game at all, and they they kind of took them to the wire. So, um, you know, they, it was a tale of two seasons for sure. Um, something to consider that that you know, all, I always wonder, um, and not a lot of people are talking about is. You know, when you look at the way the offense played, um, especially over the last, you know, say ten weeks, and the defense, and if you were, and if you were paying attention to 
like what I've been doing with the game previews is there was a there was a clear jumping off um, with their defense from when they dismissed Aubrey Pleasant, uh, Jerry Jacobs returns, John Comiskey returns from his injury, and they seem to stand up. Maybe not stand him up, but they just seem seem to free him up a little. Um, they generated much more pressure. They had they turned over the football a lot more on defense. It just things were different. Um, so so you know. From that point going forward, and then for from say specifically the last ten games of the season on the on offense, the Lions were uh, they had an incredible run. So my concern there is not necessarily. I mean, you know, it's undoubtedly uh, they had a great run. It was super exciting to watch. It's incredible to think about where they're positioned both offensively and defensively. And what it looks like going forward, but we also have to recognize that they may, that you know offensively speaking, that might have that might have been the peak for them. I know that's not, I'm not trying to be just negative or anything. It's just reality. They played great football. Jared Goff played incredible football this year. He didn't turn over the football much at all. Um, and while the the expectation is that the offense will take another step forward and become and be better or more efficient or you know whatever we want to talk about you know how that how the offense can can be better is it realistic to think that the offense is going to be better next year and I don't know I don't know that it is um it doesn't mean it's going to be bad I'm not saying that but I, I don't think it's realistic to think that Jamal Williams scores 17 times again um I'm not sure it's super realistic to see to think that that uh, the offense as a group as a whole. I'm not talking about <laughs> I'm not talking about Jared Goff. I'm not talking about anybody specifically. I'm just generalizing about about the offense that I think it's going to be tough for the offense to take another step forward and to be more efficient or better than they were this year. I just think that that's going to be a very tough thing to do. Um, which it speaks to how how well they played this year. They were the offense was awesome. Um, I don't think that they ran the ball all that effectively over the second half of the season. Uh, the numbers bear that out, but still, you know, the nuts and bolts of the whole thing is you know, the offense was great. Um, golf was great. The the passing game was really good. Uh, you know. There's not much else to say. They had a, the, the offense was was uh, explosive at times. Um, they kept them in games. They they kept them in games that they probably shouldn't have been in. Uh, overall, you know, the offense was awesome. I just you know, it's just tough to see to think about that offense with what they have taking a, a big step forward. It's just unrealistic for me to think that that's coming. Um, Maybe more consistency is something that's coming. Maybe a little more effective running the ball. Um, you know, we'll get into all that stuff as to how you can maybe get a little more efficient running the ball. But um, as the as the draft season runs on, um, defensively, it's interesting. When I think about their defense, I think you've got, uh, you know, inside you have Aleem McNeil, who's a young player. You have Isaiah Bugs, who's a relatively young player who played really well for them. Very important for them. Uh, John Comiskey played well for them, seemed to unlock things for Aiden Hutchinson, young player. Aiden Hutchinson, young player. James Houston, um, ah, what do you say? I like it, it was incredible what, what happened once they figured out they just needed to let him rush the passer and not give him other things to do. Um, just how uniquely effective he is at doing that. And thinking about what that defensive line can be, and I'm not even, I mean, we're not, uh, you know, Josh Pascal, I think, still becomes a very effective football player for them, a uh, young player. Um, Julian Okwara is still a young player. You know, they have they have lots of youth on the defensive line. You have Malcolm Rodriguez, who, who played at a high level as a rookie. You have Jeff Okuda, who's still a young player. You have Jerry Jacobs, who's a young player. Kirby Joseph was awesome, young player. Um, Tracy Walker's recovering from an Achilles tear, so we'll have to see how how he how he heals uh, and what he looks like coming back. I hope I hope 
it all goes well for him because, you know, when you look at him and Kirby Joseph together and the young cornerbacks that they do have on the roster and then you you build upon that in the draft, that is a very, very young defense. And while on offense, I'm not sure that it's super realistic to see them take a big stride um, in getting better. I think I think the defense can. And, you know, uh, a lot of that, uh, there's some free agents that will help there on defense uh, if they choose to go that way. Uh, there, obviously the draft is a big, it will, it will be a big component of it. But the point I'm making is that the defense is built with a lot of very young pieces and they still performed really admirably, admirably towards the back half of the season. Um, all of this is to say that we should all be very, very optimistic and hopeful for where the Lions are and what they're building and recognizing just how, uh, uniquely effective Brad Holmes was at bringing in pieces that have already worked. Um, and it's exciting to think about going forward what what those pieces can become. Uh, I, I am super interested to see what James Houston is going to do uh, with more playing time. And as you know, as he grows as a as a physically as he, as he matures. Um, I think of the addition of of a little interior disruption via you know a three tech type player in the draft, and I think of what that can do. And there's a there's a couple of ways you can go around that. Um, just what that what that does, and how nasty that D line could then become, and then adding in the you've got all this youth and the ability to grow in the secondary. It's just it's an exciting time to be a Lions fan. Um, it feels like I'm sipping on the Kool-Aid while we're having this conversation, but I think we all should be. Um, it's different. So that's just kind of the end of the season style. It was a great season to watch the development happen on both sides of the ball. And yes, there were things that weren't, that, you know, could have been different, but, you know, um, in totality, I thought it was a great season for the Lions. Um, Especially considering how they started, how they were in in Dan Campbell's first year, and then how they finished in year two, um, you know the idea that <laughs> that Ben Johnson comes back because he wants to be a part of this, and you know it just seems it, it, it's all heading the right way. There's just no other way to put it. It's and it's super. It just feels refreshing because I can't. I don't know. I'm sure you guys feel the same way. Like, uh, it's been a, I don't remember feeling like this. Um, okay. So, um, so like I mentioned, senior bowl starts next week. So we're, we're officially in draft season. Uh, so we're going to have the senior bowl. We're going to have the combine. We're going to have free agency and then we're going to have the draft and we're going to have a ton to talk about between now and then on a weekly basis. Um, We'll get into some positional stuff. We'll get into all of these things uh, as this goes. The pro some of the problems is these videos they can't you know it's hard to make these videos super short and informative. So we'll do the best we can, and and it may lend itself to having you know around three a week. So I hope you guys are buckled in for that. Um, and again, you know this doesn't need to be super serious stuff. It's just it's just draft. It's just football talk. It's just you know. Um, and again, we don't have a name for this thing yet, so we'll, we'll keep thinking about that. So, so, you know, when we talk about the draft, we have a long way to go as far as from an evaluation standpoint, from, uh, combine, uh, pro days, all that stuff. There's a lot of information that we're still going to, that we, you know, that we're going to get on the prospects. Um, one of the things that we can, we can talk about is the Lions current group of free agents and, and some of the players I think that are are players that they really that they really need to bring back. Um, Jamal Williams, uh, you know, I think just from a standpoint of what he brings you off the field is a player that needs to come back. Um, it is very clear that the Lions is different. The Lions' offense is very is different 
when uh, when running back DeAndre Swift is healthy and feeling it, uh, their offense is more explosive and there's just there's more potency to to uh, the entire offense, right? So um, one of the ways you can keep that is is by giving a player like Jamal Williams the bulk of the real heavy work, which is what they did. And he needs, you know, he, he I mean, he's 28, so so the end is going to come for him. But but at this point in time, he's earned he's earned whatever they're whatever they're going to give him. He's he's earned it. Uh, period. And you know, um, I know the running back position is a unique position where you shouldn't be paying for that. But I think his situation is different just because of everything else he brings. I think it's warranted that you reward him for that. And then there's a large group where, you know, like um, a player like DJ Chark, I think he may get he may get priced out of the Detroit market because the the both in in free agency and the draft, it's not you know there's just not a lot there's not a lot in the draft early. Um, at the receiver position this year for the first time in a while. Um, I could see Chark getting a pretty sizable uh, contract to go somewhere and play. Um, I love what he does here. You know, he's fast, he's big, he's an outside receiver, all that stuff. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll have to see how how this, this all plays out. Um, some of this is also based on what are, you know, what can they do with their own players in restructuring things and, you know, as much as you hate to bring up cutting players or moving on, you know, it, it's just part of the business. I think Mike, Michael Brockers is a candidate for this. Um, Halapuli Vadi Vaitai is a candidate for um, a move. Uh, you know, I'm not sure exactly how that would all shake out, but there's enough money there where I could see that happening. Um, Charles Harris may be another one because they do have they do have some pass rushers, and there's enough there's enough savings there where where you can see, you know, you can see them making those kind of moves to free up some cap space to to do some interesting things. And there are some players in free agency that you you should consider. Um, we'll get into this in a second, but you should consider maybe breaking the bank for them. Um, so the players I think that really need to come back. Um, I think you need to bring back Isaiah Bugs. I think you need to. I think Evan Brown is another really important piece coming back, and not necessarily from a guard standpoint. But we've seen Frank Rag now injured for a while, and Evan Brown played at a pretty high level at center when when Rag now did miss time. And I think there's enough value in doing that, um, that he deserves and should come back. Uh, just knowing that. Ragnall's had some foot issues and they're a little chronic at this point. Um, you know, but there's, a, there's other ones too, like um, Mike Hughes, um, Deshaun Elliott. Some of these guys are, are players that you may want to consider, you know, but every, you know, every dollar you spend on players that you have is, is maybe money that you can't spend on bringing somebody else back. John Comiskey's a player I think you should bring back. Um, I know this is a very generalized, you know, list of, of players I think that you should be thinking about, but that's just kind of where it is. Um, so, you know, that's the free agency uh, of their own players. Kind of, I mean, Alex Anzalone might be an interesting player to bring back if you can get him on, on the right kind of a contract. Um, you know, I mean, you know, there's a bunch of players of their own that they should reward. Uh, and then, and then looking at free agency, there's a, uh, one of the players I'd be looking long and hard at is Deron Payne from Washington. Um, I think he could really immediately open up that that defensive line and turn it into a pretty ferocious unit. Um, if you don't address that position, you're almost relying on you're relying on having Jalen Carter fall to you in the draft, which I don't think he will. Although I've you hear, you know, all the stuff that I think it was Todd McShay talked about a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, about hearing about him. I've heard a little bit of that, too. Um, I have to be careful with that stuff because when you hear it from an agent or two uh, who tried to sign him and didn't, you always wonder, are you getting, uh, you know, burned feelings? Are you getting, are you getting, um, 
information that may be tainted just because Jalen Carter didn't sign with them. I don't know. Uh, to be determined on that. Uh, I don't know where that is at this point, but from a, from a play standpoint, you know, you, I, I just don't know how Jalen Carter falls to six. Um, but Deron Payne solves that problem. So, so you don't have to rely upon that in the draft. Uh, obviously Deron Payne would make a lot of money, but man, would he open things up for everybody else to be, I mean, at the, at, at that point, Deron Payne and, and Aleem McNeil would be, would command three blockers, which opens up Hutchinson to be one-on-one and whoever else is rushing plus blitzing and all those things. It's just, it's, it's, you know, it's a super intriguing way to think about it. And I, and I guess this is how we're going to end this one. It's just the different approaches for, for, you know, building, um, for continuing to build things from now until the draft and through the draft. You can, I think you can do, you can do exactly what I just said. You could, you can sign Deron Payne and that can be, that could be your three tech type player. And I'm just going to throw out names and just ideas at this point. And it's not even necessarily, um, based on all that much film stuff. It's just, just ideas. But let's say you, you, you know, you, you sign Deron Payne in free agency and that really turns, that really makes that defensive line something, something special. It really would. And, um, in the draft, you target a player like Brian Branch, uh, the safety from Alabama, who who could really open up the uh, the concepts of the split zone stuff that that Aaron Glenn wanted to play early in the season. Branch would do a lot of those things. Branch can play plays all over the place. Um, he can play a little nickel corner for you. He can play on the end of the of the line of scrimmage. He can blitz. Uh, he can play in the box. He can play. Um, you know. Strong safety. He can do all those things. You have your free safety in Kirby Joseph. You bring Tracy Walker back. Suddenly your secondary looks really good. Um, I don't know exactly where where you would draft him. I don't think you would do it at six. I don't know that he's available at 18. Let's talk about trade downs. Uh, just kidding. We're not going to do that yet. We'll do that at some point, but it won't be today. Uh, but but that's just an approach, right? So you would be drafting, you'd be drafting Branch, you'd be signing Payne, and then you know just kind of filling out your roster. You're probably taking another corner. My guess is uh, you're taking a right guard at some point before some point on day two. Um, would be a really good time to take a guard and a player that you could just plug and play. Um, and do it cheaply because you don't want to have to pay. You, you're paying Rag now. You're gonna. You're paying Decker. You're gonna have to pay Jonah Jackson. Penny Sewell is gonna get a, a contract. <laughs> it's gonna be a huge contract, rightly so. You're gonna need some cost savings a little bit so that so that right guard is a position um, that you should target. Uh, a player like. Okay, everybody, sit down. I'm going to give you four seconds to sit down. Let's talk about tight ends. Now, I'm not talking about round one tight ends, even though I, the player that I'm going to talk about might end up being a round one tight end. It's Darnell Washington from Georgia. Specific, specific to the Lions, I think he opens up things um, in their running game because, because he's such an effective inline blocker. Uh, that he would really make their their power running games much more impactful. Um, I mean, right now they're running their their extra their swing tight end, whatever you want to call it. Their extra tight end that they bring out is Dan Skipper uh, at times, and it's like you know the idea of bringing out Darnell Washington and have him just inline block and then escape into the seam and catch passes and kind of lumbering along while you know, running through secondaries to me is super exciting. Um, I'm not advocating you and, you know, the Lions do anything in, you know, early in the draft with him. I'm just saying that a player like that would really open up the doors to this power ground game that they had going, that they have going. Uh, and it just would make it more effective. Um, so there's, you know, there are unique ways to do this. Uh, 
there is some chatter about uh, B. John Robinson and how impactful he would be. And I would tell you that if the Lions and Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell view themselves to be in a winning window right now, which it's reasonable they could be, um, you know, based on looking around the division and maybe if Aaron Rodgers isn't in Green Bay, I think the Lions are in a position to walk into the next season thinking they should win the NFC North. And if that's the case, then is now a time where you do go for it? Um, maybe. You know, and, it, and that's a tough conversation. Um, going for it could involve trading uh, one of these early picks for a player like Jalen Ramsey. Um, I know I'm bouncing all over the place, but this is the stuff that's being talked about. Uh, so there, there's going to be a variety of ways to build this roster and to, de- to develop this roster to make it better, uh, whether that's trades, free agency, the draft. Um, in the end, the draft is going to be, you know, the Lions have multiple picks um, early in the draft. And, you know, it'll it'll be very interesting to see the way they the way they build this thing and, and to see how it, it kind of pans itself out. Right now, there's a lot of discussion about Devin Witherspoon the Illinois cornerback going to the Lions at six. I get it. I think he's super interesting as a player. He's small. Um, He may end up playing nickel corner for you. And there was a ton of value in that. It's just talking about him at six overall to play nickel corner for you. You know, uh, I'm not saying he has to play nickel corner, but he might, he might get squeezed inside. Uh, and there's value in doing that. It's just, you know, do you want to do that with six overall? I don't know. Um, but, you know, it, it, this is just a discussion about different ways you can you can build up your roster. Um, obviously, the majority of what they do going forward does need to be uh, focused on, you know, getting the defense, getting their defensive players in the best positions possible um, and adding talent, you know, a, in and around – uh, the defensive side of the ball. Um, it's just, you know, if you're in a position where you're going to go for it, I could see them doing some interesting things, some some intriguing things, um, and maybe not being done on offense. But, uh, you know, like I said, there's, there's a bunch of ways to do this. Um, if we, you know, if we don't want to talk about the, the, you know, free agency and Deron Payne, and then, you know, we're looking at, you know, uh, if you're taking a defensive tackle, because it's really a primary need for them. I am Brian Brissy from from Clemson. Uh, it could be Brissy. I have to figure that all out. Uh, I don't know about him. I, I I'm not totally sold on his game. Um, at six overall, I I think there are some some linear traits um, and some stiffness. There are there are times when I watch him play when it's like he's taking these sort of very short steps to where I think he's there's some stiffness perhaps in his hips where where he just has trouble unlocking it. But then there are times when he closes really quick and it and it looks really good. So I got to figure it out. You know, it's not it's not a, an established opinion. So don't hold don't hold me to that yet. But but I'm not I don't love that that idea at six because I think he is a wildly inconsistent player right now. Uh, there are moments where he shows pretty good hand usage where you can see that it, it, it works. And then there are moments when he'll stand straight up and, and it's just not, you know, you can just see it's not going to work. Um, but, you know, it's very early in the process. And, and, you know, I don't have fully formed opinions on on a lot of this stuff yet. So, um Again, this is just a this is just a way of, of explaining that there's a a slew of opportunities um, and ways that they have because of the position they're in to go about expanding this roster and 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 uh, you know developing things. And it wouldn't surprise me, and none of this would surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me for Brad Holmes to use a first round pick on a trade because he's done that before. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if they did if they did make a, a, a play for a player like Deron Payne and sort of exploit, Hey, Detroit's the place to be now. I mean, I think we're seeing that, that mentality league wide, like there's a movement afoot. PT players know 
they do know. And and I think that Detroit could be one of those places where, hey, I want to be a part of that. Um, and you draw you draw free agents that you wouldn't have in the past. Uh, the idea of Deron Payne here is is super exciting to me. It just is. But um, obviously that that's a different approach because it's going to command a lot of money, and that reduces what you know the things that you can do elsewhere. So, um, so next week we're going to hit you with some Senior Bowl stuff, and we'll just kind of uh, start pushing these out. And uh, we're just going to have conversations about draft prospects and Lions stuff um, between now and the draft. And then, uh, you know, we'll alter and, and go into off-season mode and and go from there. But this is what to expect going forward. Uh, this was just a generalized conversation about a bunch of stuff. And just so everybody knows where, where things are and, and uh, what things are going to be going forward. Um, I am Scott Bischoff for at, at Detroit Lions Podcast. And uh, that's uh, that's all for today. We'll hit you next week with some Senior Bowl stuff. You guys have a great weekend.